It's Brian Preston, the money guy. Jessica has a question. She says, hi, Bo and Brian, love your show. And it's the best thing. The best thing was discovering it this year. Oh, That's wow. Great. That's nice. really nice. I know. Spotify rap. Um, I'm having trouble figuring out what I need in retirement because I'm not sure what my future will look like. I just turned 27. I make about 300K a year and save 50%. And my net worth is about 400K. I want to do FIRE, the Financial Independent Retire Early Movement, but don't know what my number is because I'm not married and I'm not sure if I want kids. How do you plan for retirement when you don't know what the future looks like? And it sounds like she has a lot of opportunity, too. Did uh, I one? I think that's awesome. Uh, the reason I'm chuckling. Did y'all see my chair? I just, I just. No, oh no, I didn't it. see that. I was, la- I was laughing because this is a layup. I this just, is, I, I don't this know. Is I don't, Jessica basically alley ooped it. Now you have to see if you have the the, the skill set to slam it down. Here's what I think is wrong. <laughs> 27 years old, making three hundred thousand dollars a year with yeah. a four hundred thousand dollar net worth. Killing it. You are 50%. the cream of the crop. You are the financial mutant. That is incredible. I don't know where you live. I don't know what your friend group looks like. I don't know what your peer group looks like. But take it from two do- from two guys who can see people all over the country. Jessica, you are absolutely killing it. Uh, and I want to re- I want to tell you this too. You're not alone. It's difficult. A lot of folks who are young, especially in their mid-20s, late-20s, early-30s, it's hard to think about what do I want my 50-year-old life to look like? What do I want my 60-year-old life to look like? Because so many things can change. I mean, even something as simple as, where do I want to live? Maybe I want to live in a coastal town. Maybe I want to live internationally. Maybe I want to go live in the Midwest. You don't know the answer to that question likely. So until you are able to like lock in some of those variables, it's difficult to, to put together like a very specific and detailed retirement plan. So This is what we encourage young people to do, and you're already doing it. When you don't know exactly what the end looks like, you kind of have to come up with just a general idea. You have to come up with what the horizon looks like. You don't know what the desert island looks like, but you can see the horizon. You can see the direction that you're going. And what you want to do is make sure the decisions that you're making are moving you towards that horizon line as quickly as possible. And for you, who has a $300,000 income, able to save 50% of that, what you're doing is you're giving yourself future opportunity to figure it out very, very quickly. Because 35-year-old Jessica, who has been saving this way and building these sort of assets, may begin to understand, okay, what's life going to look like? Am I going to get married? Am I going to have kids? Do I want to have the single family home? What part of the country do I want to live in? What's my full-time career going to look like? And as some of those variables begin to become more clear, you're going to say, holy cow, because I did that hard work early on, because I did that crazy high savings rate early on, now that I know what I want, I have the dollars built up to be able to fund those goals. So you don't necessarily have to have the goals figured out on the front end, But if you know the process to build the wealth that will allow you to achieve those goals, when you do figure them out, your future self is going to thank you. I think too many people at that age, at your age, in the late 20s, early 30s, because they don't know exactly what the future looks like, they say, oh, I'll figure it out later. I'll figure it out later. I'll figure it out. I know that what I want to do this weekend, so I'm going to focus on that. If you can have that financial mutant mindset to not just focus on this weekend, but focus on making those decisions so that when you do figure out what the future looks like, you are prepared to go grab it, you are going to be so thankful you did it. Yeah, I wrote down three quick things. Um, First of all, learn.moneyguy.com. Know your number. The reason I tell somebody like Jessica she ought to go look at this is you can start playing with the three P scenario where you can figure out what you probably think life will happen, the most profitable opportunity, and then you can play around with, oh my gosh, what happens if this all goes away and it's the poo-poo scenario. Um, go play around with a, a tool like Know Your Number so that you can really start figuring out where my boundaries are for what I should be saving and investing. Because the the second thing is, is you get to own your life sooner. I mean, that, that's that's reason that I want you to be very deliberate with why. Because remember, you're racing. I, I said this on a previous question. 
you're racing to try to get to step seven of the financial order of operations as fast as possible, get that financial foundation underneath you. So then you can start planning with the three bucket strategy and other things to figure out what your life and your time are, are prioritized into doing. And if you can build financial independence sooner, that's really what fire fire is a concept that, that got branded, but we've been all talking about this for decades. I mean, myself, I remember when I first got entered the workforce, I was like, I want to retire at 50. Mm-hmm. I, I want to Ooh. be able to do things Hope that's not how I anymore. want to do them by the time I'm 50 years of age. And, and I was very deliberate with saving and investing even in my early 20s because I wanted to own my life sooner. Now, what, what, the reason I, I like this because it transitions nicely into the third thing I wrote down is I am approaching 50. And I have no more retiring than anything else. But but I've realized it, and and. and Give me a, a little break on this and the fact that I was watching like Yellowstone and they have a podcast afterwards. And then I was talking to another content creator who's been podcasting. I think he, I started in 2006. I think he started in 2008. And I was like, isn't it cool that you have podcasts like Smartless with all these celebrities you like mm-hmm. and they're doing shows and then you see all the TV shows. And then I, I, I promise you every fire person I know and even worked with, they all retire early so then they can go get into content That's creation right. and start the job that I'm actually doing for a living anyway because I you know creating this YouTube channel and all the content and and, and so forth people get rich so they can do this for a living mm-hmm. it feels like so the, what I love is is that I'm not going anywhere because now I have built up to where I don't, money doesn't have to be maximized. It can actually be more purposeful mm-hmm. and, and actually do stuff to just for to see if what it can change yep. and what it can do. And that's really the question three, the point three I have here, Jessica, for you is the why. Um, you have to ask yourself on everything you do, what's the why with happy Jessica being kind of the solution you're looking for? Because I think somebody, you're, you're like, I'm a person, I do like a good meal. But I don't have to. There's certain things that I just don't get excited about. I don't. I don't need to go spend money. Um, I'm trying to think of because like I, I like don't, fancy watches and that kind of stuff. Yeah, I have realized I've made some mistakes in buying some of that stuff, but then I realized no, that's just the consumer world trying to tell me that's what I wanted. I've, it's funny once you have success. We've done we've done the, the shows where we've shown Jay Z looks poorer and poorer mm-hmm. the the richer he's getting, and I think I've struggled with that a little bit too. Yeah. Is that I have what the world tells me I should want. And then I have when I've when you can buy anything you want, and you realize, oh, no, that doesn't do it for me. That's just them trying to convince me. Jessica, you're going to find the same thing. So I want to have you look at your life in your 20s and say, am I doing everything I should be doing in my 20s to build memories, to have this great life, so that when I look back in my when I'm in my 40s, that I don't have regrets. But I don't also want you just to go buy the Bugatti because you because can, you can yeah. because you might find out no wh- what it didn't that's not that's not what's bringing me mm-hmm. happiness you know so ask yourself in all seriousness ask yourself what brings you happiness if it is if it's the Bo Hansen answer where two Starbucks a day and you make you know three hundred thousand dollars <laughs> you make three hundred thousand dollars in twenty seven. You can go buy uh, two, two lattes a day, a day and nobody's going to care because that's what makes you happy. Go do more of that. But if you find out that driving the super fancy car or buying fancy jewelry is pretty empty to you, don't go do don't more of that money. just because uh, the, the, the ads tell you you make money. Focus on making sure you're maximizing the why and bringing more happiness to your life and fulfillment to your life because you're going to be able to do anything and everything you want. So that puts even more responsibility on you to figure out what is that overall picture mm-hmm. um, because it's really liberating when you do stuff because you want to, not because you have to. That's right.